In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a spin review functionality where we can see what is the winner based on pressing this button. As you can see here, this is Monday. If I press again, here we get Thursday and let's try one more time and it's Sunday. So to create a spin the wheel in Chart.js, first of all, what we need is to have our boiler template ready, which you can find here on Chart.js3.com getting started. This specific link here, once you're on here, just copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, join the Patreon page. And of course, check out the Discord channel for any questions. All these links are in the description box. So to do this, the first thing what I want to do here is basically get the item or, well, let's get the pie chart. I want to remove the scales. We don't have a scale in the pie chart. Let's save that, refresh, there we are. That looks quite nice. So what I want to do now is create a pointer that basically gives us or de determines the pointer wherever we rotate on, what it points towards, that will be eventually the winning score or segment. So what I'm going to do here, comma, Go to your plugins. Then I'm going to say here, uh, spin the wheel or maybe a spin pointer. That's basically what we're getting. Copy this. Then what I'm going to do here, constant this equals, uh, not the plugins, no, like that, ID that. And then I'm going to say here, uh, after data sets draw chart arcs plugin options then i'm going to say constant equals chart this is the object destructuring and then what i want to do here probably will only need uh ctx i'm not even sure if we need anything else um i'll just leave it as it is and then we can see if ever we need anything else so what i want to do now is oh i guess we need the chart area sorry we need the chart area as well because we need to get um i think the top position that's the one so basically what i need to do here now is create that pointing shape but it will be here position top but in the center so we need to figure out how we can get the center of this area and then the top so to do this first thing what i want to do is get the center for the x coordinate because that will be the starting point so what i'm going to do here console log chart dot get data set meta this is a built-in functionality that gives us access to the value. And what I basically want is the data and then here dot x. What this gives is, and uh, let's see, we're missing a parenthesis. Refresh, there we are. What it gives is the value here, which is this specific point. But that's the exact center, <coughs> sorry, that's the exact center of our item. So that is the exact center of here from left to the center here. So this is the right value and then here the very top. So that will be very easy. So what I can say here, constant x center equals this value. And now what I want to do here is start to draw. So I'm going to say a ctx.save to save all variables above. And then I'm going to say ctx.begin path to create our shape. Basically, I'm saying I'm going to draw something that is independent of anything else. Then what I'm going to do here is say CTX have moved to, and then we need the X and Y coordinates. I want to start at the bottom here, or basically somewhere here, and then we're going up, basically up and then to the left, and afterwards we have to go to the right. So we create the triangle, basically. So to do this, what I will say is I want to have it maybe 30 pixels in every side of the triangle will be 30 pixels so what i'm going to do here is i'll just grab the x center but then i'm going to say here plus 30 pixels so that will mean that we're going 30 pixels down here somewhere and then we can calculate it nicely then we have the y and the y will be the top that we have here because that's the top side of the chart area once we did this i need to pinpoint the next one so i say move a line to and align to again x and y however in this case i want to go to the top and then i realized i made a mistake here and the reason why what is the mistake here this is the x center and the x scale or the x area is a horizontal level and not a vertical level so basically from the top i need to go down 30 pixels so instead of here 
it should be plus 30 and this one should be none but here what I want to do now is I want to go up but I want to make sure that this point to here will be 30 pixels so that will mean that I'm going up and then I'm going instead of 30 pixels to the left I only go 15 because 15 here and 15 there makes 30 so we're going to say here minus 15 pixels to the left then what I will do same but now the opposite direction let's say plus and then here ctx dot fail style and this will be black for now we can give it any color you want uh, and then ctx dot fill of course sorry that's the one we can just put the black here up that will make more sense there we are so now we have this here so what I would like to do next is to create the rotating functionality here so to create the rotation I'm going to create a, a button here very straightforward button and then say on click and if we do an on click we will rotate so we say rotation something and then we say here spin the wheel so once we did this refresh we have a button here but of course it's not connected yet so once we click this button we want to rotate this how do we do this well we can just grab this function here and then I'm just going to create a function here underneath here we say function this and then in here what I want to do is I want to give it the rotation so I'm going to grab here the chart this is the chart I want to pinpoint because that's the chart we are drawing it for then I'm going to say here seat of a dot and then what we're going to say here the config dot data dot data set basically well, let me just explain what we're doing I want to put in here basically in this data set rotation or is that rotate I think it's rotation and let's do 100 if I save this refresh as you can see here it is rotating nicely so what I want to do is because there's now none so it's just default in the center top or in the upper position so we want to create one that when we click on it it will rotate it for a few times or spin it multiple times so basically that's why we have this here data sets at zero dot uh, not the data but rotation and in rotation we'll just make it very simple we're going to say a math dot random and then we just multiply this by a high number let's say triple or three thousand three hundred thirty three all right so once we have this I want to say my chart dot update to update the chart let's save this refresh and now if I spin the wheel there we are and as you can see here it spins it and it depends on what it does it gives us any kind of value and what I want to have here basically is what are we pointing on and once we know what we're pointing on we can say the winner is Monday or if we spin again the winner will be Thursday or something else so to do this we're going to work with the angles we're going to use some tricks here so just pay attention because this was a real tricky item so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the my chart put it in here and then say you get data set meta index 0 dot data and then I guess we can do it for each loop because what I want to do now is I want to measure something very specific I want to get the angle position of this and this so we can calculate how big the rotation is and if this pointer is within that specific rotation every chart or every segment has a starting angle and an ending angle so it calculates the rotation here or, or the the slice rotation so we want to grab that one how do we do this we well, are going in here in the data and I'm going to say here, let's say data point comma index and then we say here function error expression and then within here I'm going to say a console log and get the data point dot start angle once we do this refresh and then of course right now we have this here or we need to press the button or else we will not trigger the item as you can see here it grabs all of the data what I need here is not only the starting angle but I need to know as well the ending angle so I'm going to say here that's basically those two and what I want to calculate now is are we pointing up here and I will be calculate I will be calculating that with the 200 or the degree 
So we know that a full circle is 360 degrees. However, in ChartJS, for some reason, the calculation of zero degrees starts here at the left, or sorry, at the right side. And it goes down here, so to a 360. That will mean that this upper point here is not zero, while the chart starts at the very top, but it's not zero in the canvas. This is considered the value of 270. So that will mean that if you're close to 270, we will get this here. But if you look at our numbers here, we're getting them from the pi, math.pi. And we know that one pi is a half circle, two pi is a full circle. Whatever the value is here needs to be calculated and converted into an angle of 360 degrees. And from there on, we can calculate that. So to do this, I need to first calculate the constant angle. So I say angle equals 180. And pay attention here. This was a very tricky one. Normally, I always have math.pi first divided by 180. But that, for some reason, I just cannot get that to work. But in this structure of 180 divided by math.pi, it will work. So make sure you do it like this, exactly like this, or else you'll get an issue. So what I want to do now is just calculate whatever we have here, that starting angle, I want to calculate that, and then we just multiply this by an angle like this. If I do this right now, I'm going to show you, we're going to get some very high numbers. Uh, console log, press on this, there you are, and as I keep on going, you can see here, it starts to calculate on top, on top, on top. So that means it's cumulative, meaning plus, plus, plus. It keeps on adding. This is an issue because we only have here, if 1 pi is 3.4 and 2 pi is a full circle, it would mean that 6 point plus 6.4, 6.8, whatever it is, gives us the full circle. So having 2,169 would be far too much. So what we have to do here, this value, because it's calculated because of the rotation that is more than 3,000 times. What we have to do here, we have to divide that by pi to get the original pi number back to its basic and then divide that by the radians or basically the angles. Sounds all very complicated, but basically we have here this. And what I want to do now is once we have this, I want to say, give me the modulo, that's the percentage symbol, by 360. If I get that safe, refresh, click on this, we're now getting the number here and it will never be higher than 360. As you can see here, if I keep on pressing, there is nothing more than 360, meaning that we have a full circle calculated. This information is very useful because now we can compare it with a 270. So the same logic what I did here, I need to do as well for the end angle. So I'm going to say constant and I'm going to say here, this will be the net start angle we calculate the basic number from this so I do the same logic we can do here so I'm going to say net end angle and we're going to say here the data point will be the end angle save if I click on this of course nothing happens yet so what we need to do next is start to check if the value would be between here now we know because we know this is 270 so if it's if the starting angle is lower than 270 and the ending angle is higher than 270, we know that it's within this specific segment, so we can get the exact value. So what I'm going to do now here is an if statement, and the if statement will be if 270 is larger than the net, which should be, because the net should be smaller than this number, and 270 and then here the 270 should be or if the 270 would be or sorry and not or and 270 should be smaller than the net angle so once we did this what i want to do now is say here console log tell me if we find any value here i'll just say here for now yes let's save that refresh and if i click on that and um, all right there you are so there's something happening, I'm going to explain to you why, what's happening. This here is updating the chart first and afterwards it will give us the value. Problem is, 
right now this function is shooting immediately or triggered immediately. What does this mean? It triggers immediately, but once it updates, this here cannot really be calculated yet. And the reason for that is because look, it's spinning at the time. So what we need to do is here, give it a few seconds of resting time. However, I will work on it later on. We can do a delay of that. What I want to do first is get, we say here, yes. So it does recognize there's something pointing towards. I want to grab the value, whatever is pointing to it. So how do I get this? Well, what we can do here is the following. Uh, we can say here, um, we have here the index. So let's put that in here, say refresh. So we can see here now the index. All right, so this is Tuesday. If I click now, it should probably grab Tuesday right now. There you are. It doesn't grab Tuesday, but I get index one, which is correct because index one is Tuesday. Now it's Sunday, that's index six, because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we should have six, there we are. All right, now let's start to convert this into a item or into the text. I'm going to use here again, basically the same thing that we did here, but I'm going instead of data, I just go directly into the labels and not into the data sets because I just get here the index number that matches with this here. So what I'm going to do here, going down, I'm going to say here, data and I just grab the, this I'll say your console log data dot labels index save refresh press press there we are Thursday now it should be a Friday there we are all right so this works but now I need to give it a proper delay because this doesn't make any sense so what I'm going to do next is give this a proper delay and to give this a proper delay, I need to say here, let's do it here, set time out. Then I say your function error expression. And then within this area here, let's see if we get everything, all of the codes. There we are. This is the entire code. I will cut this out. Put it in here. Now... Once I did this, we have this item here. I want to give it a delay of maybe, uh, let's say three, the three milli, uh, 3,000 milliseconds, that will be three seconds. So if I click on that, all right, set timeout is not defined. Hold on, uh, set timeout. What is going on here? Of course, this should be, is a small, oh, save, refresh. There we are. One, two, three, Sunday. All right, that takes a bit too long. Let's do one second. So now if I click on it, Saturday. That is correct, Saturday. Let's try it two more times. Now it's Monday, another time. Again, Monday, let's do one more time. This is Monday as well, interesting. All right, I guess Monday is a very lucky one for now. So Monday is it. So this is working now, as we can see. What I would like to do now, maybe just to put that value inside here. Well, let's do something very, very basic. It's going to do basic HTML here. And I'm going to say hit a button and then we say winner. Winner is, they're going to say yes, span ID winner. And then here I'm going to just put in the text. I will not spend time on layout. You can do that as you want with CSS. So what I want to do here, I'm going to say your constant winner equals um, document dot get element by ID. And I will be winner. And then I'm going to say here the winner. I'm going to say here text in or in a text or text note, whatever you want, will be equal to our value here. Copy this, put it in there. Save that. Refresh. Now I winner. Press on it. Choose for Thursday, that's correct. One more time, confirm that. This is Friday, one more time. Thursday again, and that's basically it. 